Good morning, and welcome to our online service. Whether you're at church, at home, or sharing the service online with friends and family, we invite you to worship with us. We are the body of Christ. Together we come to worship an amazing God. I also want to wish you a very happy Thanksgiving. Let's worship and give praise to our Lord and Savior. Amen. Good morning and happy Thanksgiving. To those of you at Chickie's Church, we love you and we miss you. To those of you who are worshiping with us from the comfort of your home, either nearby or far away, we welcome you. It is a pleasure to have you with us this morning. I would like to take this opportunity to wish all of you a very happy, healthy, and safe Thanksgiving. This is the time of year when we thank God for all that he has given us. We are indeed very blessed. And so now we come to this worship service with grateful hearts. Please join me in the call to worship. God, beyond all praising, we worship you today and sing the love amazing that songs cannot repay. We can only wonder at every gift you send, at blessings without number and mercies without end. We lift our hearts before you and wait upon your word. We, we honor, honor and adore, adore you, our, our great and mighty Lord. Lord. The opening hymn this morning is Now Thank We All Our God. Please join me in the opening prayer. Generous God, you have given us so much. Give us one more thing. Give us thankful hearts because we know our hearts can be hard and cold. We often hold on when we should let go. We are hoarding when we could be generous and doubting when we should lean on faith. We are fearful instead of trusting in your everlasting care. 
Give us again the assurance of your love and care and fill us with grateful hearts and open hands. Amen. The first lesson this morning is Psalm 100, verses 1 through 5. Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us, and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Thank you for your generosity and your faithful giving. Your giving helps us to work with others in our community to provide for those in need. We are blessed. And it's because of you, for your continued support for our missionaries and also for our missions here at home. This is a way for us to proclaim the good news. Let us recognize our Lord and Savior with joy in our hearts. As the Lord speaks to your heart today, we ask that you consider mailing your gifts, your tithes, and your offerings so that we are able to continue to be the hands and feet of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, in our community, nation, and around the world. Gracious and Heavenly Father, bless these gifts as well as the giver. Use these gifts in a bold and mighty way to continue to grow your kingdom. We pray this now in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Yes, you were. Yes, you were. 
Our gospel lesson this morning is taken from the book of Philippians, chapter 1, verses 3 through 6, and chapter 2, verse 13. I thank my God every time I remember you, and all my prayers for all of you. I always pray with joy because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. For it is God who works in you to will and to act according to his good purpose. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Dear God, I know I'm supposed to be thankful in all things, in all the seasons, through trials and tribulations, in good times and bad, but here I am in the middle of it, sad and overwhelmed. The world as I knew it is gone. People I love are suffering. The life I walk through is suddenly no more. I can't gather around a table and celebrate family. I can't hold hands with those I care about. Instead, Grief and despair seem to be eager dinner guests. God, I don't feel like celebrating. But I sit at my table and I close my eyes, listening for that still, small voice, the one that always manages to rise above all the noise of this life. I hear you, above the sadness, above the fear, above the bewilderment of all that has happened this year. There you are, whispering, be still, and know that I am God. And I close my eyes, and I take a deep breath, and I find my thankfulness in a God who is still in control. Amen. Gracious and Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your Holy Spirit that dwells in this place. Lord, equip and empower each and every one of us, and may you receive the honor, glory, and praise in all that we do. I lift this up before thee, and I pray this now in Jesus' precious name. Amen. This is the final week of of a four-week series titled, The Lost Art of Gratitude. In our message today, will we be thankful, not just for the past actions of God, but also for his continual work in our lives? You know, in a few days, we will observe Thanksgiving. Since the first Thanksgiving day was observed 
by the pilgrims in 1621. And on October the 3rd, 1863, an act of Congress designated an annual national day of Thanksgiving as proclaimed by President Abraham Lincoln. I want us to listen to these words. I do, therefore, invite my fellow citizens in every part of the United States to set apart and observe the last Thursday of November, next as a day of thanksgiving and praise to our Holy Father who dwelleth in the heavens. It is announced in the Holy Scriptures and proven by all history that those nations are blessed whose God is the Lord. It has seemed to me fit and proper that God should be solemnly, reverently, and gratefully acknowledged as with one heart and one voice by the whole American people. So this Thanksgiving, many people may feel more discouraged than thankful. So much has changed in our world. We've experienced tremendous loss and felt despair. I encourage you, I encourage you to listen for God's still small voice and be reminded that he is, in, he is still in control. You know, for that, we can be grateful. I want us to listen to these words in Psalm 46, 10. Be still and know I am God. Let us acknowledge God for who he is, allowing him to do what only he can do. I believe God's desire for us is to live a lifestyle of thanksgiving. You know, I really resonate with what author Nancy DeMoss states here, that thanksgiving really should be thanks living, a way of life, day in, day out, morning, noon, and night, continually, forever given thanks to the Lord. You know, gratitude provides the deep spiritual roots we need when we're going through, well, difficult times. You know, the Apostle Paul writes in 1 Thessalonians 5.18, whatever happens, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. We are to give thanks in all circumstances. But did you notice in verse 18, it does not tell us to give thanks for all circumstances, but in all circumstances. Evil and justice and cruelty exist, you know, every day in this world. And scripture never instructs us to give thanks for, well, wickedness and immorality and sinful circumstances, but to give thanks in them. So even in the worst of times, God wants us to be grateful. You know, one of my congregants had asked me not too long ago what I was, you know, grateful for here at Chickie's church. You know, I responded by telling them that I am grateful for my church sharing the good news and love. Our church's love is, is demonstrated by our, our warm hospitality and humble service to the community and also in missions. You know, people come and they stay because they feel like, well, they're part of a family. You know, I'm grateful also for the way our church serves the Lord. They do this through their time, their talents, their service, their gifts, their prayers, and most importantly, love for one another. I'm also grateful for their services in faith. I'm grateful for our volunteers and our, our lay leaders for sacrificing their time and energy, their finances, to minister in different ways and different areas of our church. And here's a couple examples. Pop Your Trunk Food Drive, our Building Fund and Projects Drive, 
our Women in Missions fundraiser to support ministries and missions, our community outreach events, our youth missions trip, and our Samaritan's Purse shoebox fundraiser. And these are just to name a few. I'm grateful. I'm grateful for their generosity and also faithful giving so that we can continue to support local missions and missionaries around the globe. I'm grateful for all that they, they do. And this is because they do this with a grateful heart. To God be the glory. So what are you grateful for? And as you think about that, I ask that you share that with family, with friends. You know, as Christians, there are some obvious things that we can be thankful for. We're thankful for Jesus' atoning death on the cross that brings us salvation. We're thankful that we have a relationship with God. But what about what God is doing for us right now? You know, in the context of our scripture today in Philippians 1, 6, it says this, and I am sure of this, that he who began a good work in you will bring it to completion at the day of Jesus Christ. Well, the apostle Paul goes on and he would later say, for it is God who works in you both to will and to work for his good pleasure. So God, uh, didn't just do something for us in the past. No, he is continually working in us and through us in our lives. So what does this all mean for us today? Well, gratitude can become a spiritual discipline in our lives. Instead of being, say, thankful just on holidays, we can equip ourselves to constantly be thankful for what God has done and is currently doing. For example, the moment someone has a child, it's obvious that we should be thankful to God. Well, what about that time that we're in traffic and we're stuck? Some of you may agree with me, but perhaps, just perhaps, we can be thankful in that situation by seeing it as a time to slow down. Slow down in our busy schedules or a chance to pray. Pray and hear what God is about to do in our lives. No moment or circumstance is too small to acknowledge the good God can do in that moment in the world. So as followers, as followers of Jesus Christ, we're not immune to, to trials, to pains, to difficulties and sufferings in this life. In fact, life can be, well, pretty brutal at times. It can be extremely difficult to give thanks to God in those times. But through the power of the Holy Spirit that's in us, we can give thanks in all circumstances. God is always with us, even in the darkest times. I want us to hear these words of encouragement that God told Joshua here in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 31, verse six and verse eight. Listen to these words. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or terrified because of them. For the Lord your God goes with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. The Lord himself goes before you and will be with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. So life can be hard and circumstances, well, they can be difficult. But just as God, yes, told Joshua, God tells us that we need not despair. God is with us and goes ahead of us in every danger or challenge that we face. Nothing can take him by surprise or 
catch them off guard. You know, we never go through these times alone. God is always there. He knows what you're going through and he knows how he is going to, well, bring us out. So I encourage you, I encourage you to listen to God's still small voice and be reminded that he is still in control. Let's live a life of thanks living, day in, day out, morning, noon, and night, continually, forever given thanks to the Lord. We can be thankful not just for, well, past actions, but also for God's continual work in our lives today. And for that, we can be thankful. You know, each week, we invite you to accept this free gift of Jesus Christ. We also invite those who feel in their hearts to reaffirm their faith as well. See, God sent his one and only son to die on a cross for all of our sins. He spent three days, three days in a grave. And after three days, he rose from the dead. He defeated death, yes, and declared victory over it. If you believe this in your heart and have accepted this through faith, this is God's invitation for you today. If you are drawn by the Holy Spirit, well, join with me now in prayer. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, forgive me. I turn toward you so I may be whole. I accept this free gift of Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. Amen. If you have accepted this free gift, this free gift, praise God. Let someone know, let us know, so that we can walk beside you and, and send you resources. And as we walk beside you during your faith's journey, we'd love to hear from you and be able to walk beside you. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Lord, we thank you for this day. We praise you today. Lord, we thank you that you are the source of all true joy in life. Your word says that everything that God created is good and nothing is to be rejected if it is received with thanksgiving because it is consecrated by the word of God and prayer. Lord, Help us to receive all the good gifts you give us with thanksgiving and gratitude in our hearts. Lord, we ask for prayers now for Sherry and Larry, for Lorraine, for Rick and Joni, for Betty, for Chuck, Jed, and Sue, for Norman and Jordan, for Guy, for Glory and Ben, for Catherine and Lori, for Lenora, for Keith and Joyce, for Devin, for Audrey, for Rich and Joanne, for Sharon, for Regina and Paula. Lord, you know what they need. Lord, hear our prayers. Lord, we bring to you now our unspoken prayers. Lord, hear our prayers. Lord, each and every week we pray for our nation. May you heal our land. Lord, we continue to pray for an end to this virus and that you heal the world in its grips. Lord, we continue to pray for all those who have lost loved ones to this disease. May you comfort them. May you strengthen them and lift up their spirits. Lord, we pray for our first responders. We pray for our military. 
And we ask, Lord, that you place a hedge of protection around them and their families. Lord, we pray for all the students that have gone back to school, for the teachers, administrators, for the parents, for those school bus drivers and all those behind the scenes. Lord, comfort them. Lord, give them strength. Lord, we pray for Chickie's Church. We pray for the many churches in our local community and throughout the world. May your light shine through the church. Lord, we praise you and we thank you for all you have done. And we ask that these things in the name of our risen Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Our worship service is over. His service begins. Again, happy Thanksgiving. Take care and God bless.